Hello, my name is David Stewart and I'm the board's Deputy Medical Director. I've been working with a team of people over the past year or so to look at how we manage patients who are accessing our unscheduled care across the, the board area and what we might do to improve performance in that area. This short presentation will outline our main findings and describe our recommendations as to how we might improve things. One of the first pieces of work that the team did was to look at the demand on the service and what our current resources are in order to cope with that demand. What we were able to demonstrate was that the way we work at the moment is resulting in a significant pressure on our unscheduled care beds and that this is driving an occupancy level in these beds way above what we would hope for. We can see from the slide there that the occupancy in our unscheduled care beds ranges from 106% at the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital to 97.5% at the uh, Royal Alexandra Hospital. To put that in context, it's generally recognised that if you run an occupancy in acute beds of much over 85%, then it's likely that your systems will be inefficient. So it's no surprise, given these figures, that there has been such a strain on the system over the past couple of years. There are a number of ways that we might think about addressing this problem. The first and perhaps the most obvious one is to increase the number of beds. There are, however, a number of reasons why that might not be a good idea. The first and I think most important is, is we have evidence which I'll go on to discuss that it's not the best thing for patients always to put, to put them into an inpatient bed when there are better alternatives for care. Secondly, we would have real issues coming up with the resource to manage extra beds, particularly in terms of staffing, nurses, doctors, EHPs, etc. And finally, it would put a significant financial burden on the organisation, which would mean that we couldn't use that money on better ways of managing patients. What we've done, as well as looking at the number of beds available, is to look at the demand on these beds and to see whether there is a better way of managing that demand. What this slide shows is that Glasgow admits more patients from our ED departments compared to a similar facility in Lothian. And this equates to some 13,000 extra patients a year. What we wanted to do was to understand what was driving this extra demand and whether there was a better way of managing it. We've looked at this by specialty and we can see from this graph that our admissions are higher than uh, comparable boards in a number of areas and I've highlighted in this slide just three specialties in particular. So you can see that compared to Lothian, the green bars, and NHS Tayside, the orange bars, that Glasgow's admission rates are significantly higher in general medicine, general surgery, and geriatric medicine. Indeed, the figure for geriatric medicine is approximately twice as high as those seen in our adjoining boards. Now, it's always difficult to be sure that you're comparing like with like, but this does give, I think, quite a strong signal that there are opportunities for us to uh, address this. We did some further work with colleagues in uh, NSS Scotland using their discovery programme, which uh, gives us very useful comparative data on our rates of admission by specialty. What this graph here shows is the number of admissions per thousand population in Greater Glasgow and Clyde, and that's the long blue bar, compared to the Scottish average, which is the grey dot, and also compared to the upper quartile performance, which is the green line. This gives a, a similar picture to the previous slide in that it shows that our admission rates in general medicine, general surgery and geriatric medicine are significantly higher. But it also allows us to look at individual specialties. So, for instance, respiratory medicine in this uh, graph is, is also showing significantly higher admission rates. 
So in terms of the key recommendations of the report, there were, there were a number of uh, issues that, that, that we identified. These were that we needed to manage our current inpatient capacity better, that we needed to look at alternatives to admission by providing condition-specific pathways, we needed to look at our emergency department processes to make sure that they were operating as efficiently as possible. We recognised that there was a, a big role for e-health and IT to support us in this and that we needed to better develop the infrastructure to deliver unscheduled care change without always relying on inpatient beds. Some of the work we did was around ambulatory care pathways. There's been some interesting work that's come out of NHS England and Wales, which has identified on a condition specific basis, the proportion of patients that you might expect to manage by ambulatory care rather than admitting to hospital. And we were able to use this information and apply it to the data for Greater Glasgow and Clyde. What this showed was that there were significant opportunities to manage patients through ambulatory care pathways rather than admission, and that this equated to over 8,000 patients per year in Greater Glasgow and Clyde. This breaks down in the, in the graph, you can see to uh, five, over 5,000 at the QEUH, over 2,000 at uh, the REH, and over 800 at uh, Glasgow Royal Infirmary. Using uh, this data, we were able to identify the, the top conditions that, that would give us benefit in, in this area, and the top 19 conditions would uh, accounts for about 91% of the potential opportunity. If we just look at the top eight conditions, uh, they are documented in the slide there. So acute abdominal pain, chest pain, deliberate self-harm, falls, acute headache, seizure, COPD and cellulitis account for a very significant uh, number of patients that we might manage differently and we're actively working on pathways to provide alternative methods of delivering care for these patients. A particular focus was patients who are admitted from nursing homes. Anecdotally, we had heard from uh, clinical staff that a lot of patients were being admitted from nursing homes and it was not always clear that these admissions were appropriate. It's actually quite difficult to get accurate data in this respect, but working with our public health colleagues and business information colleagues, we were able to get good uh, data which allowed us to, to look at this issue. What it showed was that on average we're admitting about 12 patients a day across Greater Glasgow and Clyde from nursing homes, so there is a, a, a significant workload there. We were also able to identify that about 60% of the admissions came from a third of the care homes in, in our area. We could look further at this data and we were able to identify the main conditions that uh, patients were being admitted with, also the number of times patients were being admitted per year from individual care homes. What we know from work done in England and elsewhere is that it's possible to significantly reduce the number of admissions from nursing homes if you provide appropriate support to the care homes. We're not saying for a moment that patients from care homes should not be admitted from hospital. Often that will be entirely appropriate, but there is a significant opportunity to manage a large proportion of these patients in, in a better way. And typically, reductions in number of admissions from care homes of some 40 to 80% have been reported in pilot projects in England. What we've shown is, is that for every 10% reduction in the number of admissions from nursing homes that we were able to achieve, that would save us about eight beds in Glasgow and Clyde per day. So if we were able to get up to the 30-40% uh, seen in, in other areas, that would be giving us in excess of 20 to 30 beds per day. The other, uh, another area rather that we were very keen to explore was the management of our frail elderly patients. There are a significant number of elderly patients who, although ill, are not, uh, do not have an acuity of illness that, that would otherwise require them to be admitted to hospital. They are, however, frail and needing support and rehabilitation, and therefore they often do find that they uh, get into the, the hospital system.
A lot of work has been done in boards elsewhere in Scotland to develop frailty pathways that provides an alternative way to manage these patients that can get comprehensive geriatric assessment done quickly and uh, allow these patients to be safely discharged home uh, with rehabilitation packages in place and avoiding lengthy hospital stays. That's something that we are very keen to explore in uh, Greater Glasgow and Clyde. There's already been a lot of work done in that area, particularly in the Royal Alexandra Hospital through the Renfrewshire project. We've taken some of that learning and also experience from elsewhere and we're piloting work now in the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and Glasgow Royal Infirmary. Early work from Queen Elizabeth has shown already significant improvements in length of stay and turnover of patients. Another area we looked at was in our emergency department processes and we've made a number of recommendations on that count. Uh, these include what we call Triage Plus. This is a, a system whereby patients have an early senior assessment which allows them to get onto the, the correct treatment pathway as early as possible following their, their presentation. Likewise, we, we've identified flow management as something that's important to us, in particular the need to make sure that minor injury patients move through the, the system quickly and effectively so that they don't uh, cause uh, log jams in, in, in the system. I've already mentioned alternatives to admission. One of the, uh, the, the main reasons that we have a high uh, admission rate from our emergency department is that the clinical staff often don't have the alternative pathways to use. So we're going to put a lot of effort into making sure that these alternatives, more appropriate alternatives are available. And finally, we're looking at how our emergency departments can work as seamlessly and effectively as possible with, with acute medical colleagues. Another strand of work has been around the management of our uh, current inpatient capacity. I've already mentioned that we're looking at reducing the number of admissions, but once patients are admitted to hospital, we need to make sure that they're being managed as well and effectively and efficiently as possible. So one of the areas that we're looking at is, is length of stay uh, in hospital. And in order to improve length of stay and make uh, discharge from hospital more effective, we've been running what we call the Exemplar Ward program. This was piloted in the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital, but has since spread to our other acute sites. It's been recognised nationally as a, uh, as, as a very good piece of work and has been promoted to, to other boards. There are a number of uh, processes involved in the exemplar ward uh, work. These include uh, twice daily board rounds, morning board rounds, afternoon board rounds and effective discharge planning. What this has allowed us to do is in the wards where this has been implemented is it's, uh, it's achieving pre-noon discharges exceeding 50% and that's a very important factor in, in making sure that beds are available at a timely uh, manner to support the patients coming in through the uh, emergency routes. These two graphs there sh uh, show uh, uh, two different wards and they show the impact of the exemplar ward work. So the blue graph uh, is, the, pre is uh, the performance before exemplar ward work was rolled out and the green is after. And we can see in each of these wards improvements in pre-noon discharge, the discharge uh, lounge usage, uh, criteria-led discharge and weekend uh, discharge. So to summarise, we have demonstrated that the, the, the acute system is out of balance with respect to supply and demand, the way we work at the moment. We recognise that the unscheduled care target against the, the four hour uh, target has, has been inadequate. We've already started a number of initiatives to shorten length of stay and to make sure that our discharges occur in an effective and timely manner. 
In addition to that, we've recognised that we can improve the efficiency and effectiveness of our emergency department processes and there is a real opportunity to manage patients differently through outpatient and ambulatory care pathways. It's also become clear to us when we've been doing this work that we need to work very closely with our colleagues in primary care and with the HSCPs. So, in conclusion, we believe there are significant opportunities to address our unscheduled care performance and we believe that this will improve patient care and experience by providing more appropriate care pathways. Better management of our inpatient stay is already underway and is, and is paying dividends and the, the mantra there really is no one should be in a bed that doesn't need to be there. We believe there is a, a real need to invest in more outpatient and ambulatory care and work is underway to deliver that. And finally, it is very clear that the acute division will not deliver these improvements on its own and we need to work very closely with colleagues in primary and community care. So the HSCPs will play a very significant role in delivering this improvement programme as we go forward. Thank you.